Did you know? Though Donkey Kong Country Returns was in development in 2008, talks for the game actually began much earlier. In April 2004, Retro Studios brought up the idea of working on a Donkey Kong game after finishing Metroid Prime 2, but the idea was shot down. Instead having them follow up with a third Prime game, producer Kensuke Tanabe said Nintendo relied on Retro Studios to make games that Japanese studios couldn't. Later, in April 2008, Nintendo veteran Shigeru Miyamoto was in talks with Tanabe about making a new Donkey Kong Country. He asked about finding a developer suited for the job, and Tanabe recalled Retro's president Michael Kelba. Kelba had previously worked on the DKC series with Rare and said he'd love to work on it again. Tanabe himself had also worked on DKC's Japanese localization. At this time, several core Retro staff had left the company, leaving them open for new projects. Had those personnel not left to pursue other interests, the opportunity to work on Donkey Kong might not have gone to Retro. In an edition of Iwata Asks, former Nintendo president Satoru Iwata referred to this set of circumstances as fate. As a result of this, Returns went under the code name F8 during development, a name coined by Kelba. Retro didn't feel at all skeptical about going from Metroid to Donkey Kong, and the brighter atmosphere of the DK series reflected their outlook on the project. Occasionally, they'd make art that was more Metroid than DK, but their mantra throughout was to keep things fun and whimsical. The team played through the country and land games to get a good grasp on the gameplay, as well as Banjo-Kazooie for good measure. Wario Land on Virtual Boy was also a huge inspiration, as it featured platforming that switched between the foreground and background, much like Returns does. Miyamoto was heavily involved in Returns creation, giving suggestions for gameplay ideas and animation details. Retro affectionately referred to him as Master Yoda, and he had told them that Donkey Kong was his baby and that they better get it right. Miyamoto came up with the hand slap move for the original DKC and made a subtle change to it for Returns. Initially, Retro made a simple animation for the move, and he suggested it have more of a 1-2 rhythm, and they were surprised as to how that subtle suggestion made the move feel so much better to perform. The game's blow mechanic also came from Miyamoto after playing an early demo. For 10 minutes, he ran back and forth with DK, seeing how he moved, and took notice of the final frames of animation where he'd turn and kick up dust. Miyamoto said it looked like DK was exhaling, then suggested he should blow on things. It was a new way to interact with the environment, and the suggestion confused the team at first. During the 2011 Game Developers Conference, director Brian Walker had this to say, When we got back to Retro and pitched this to the team, the lights didn't instantly come on. The general response was, what the hell? But after we experimented with it, we saw how it turned out to be a fun feature, and it was really consistent with the fun, whimsical tone of the game. Miyamoto wanted Retro to focus on a single-player experience first and foremost, but Tanabe wanted Returns to have good multiplayer, fully realizing what couldn't be done in the original games, two players at the same time. However, a second target would increase the game's character animation count and add an extra layer to the game's camera system and level geometry. Multiplayer also acted as a way to separate Returns from the previous DK game, Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. Interestingly, where the original Jungle Beat distanced itself from the country games, the Wii version of Jungle Beat featured more elements from country. This included barrel cannons and even DK's ducking animation from the original DKC. Jungle Beat may have inspired the beatdowns at the end of a boss fight in Returns, and level end jingles from Jungle Beat play at the end of a Returns level. development on Tropical Freeze started shortly after Returns was released. Retro initially denied any hints of a sequel, but they still had unfinished business with the series. The Wii U hardware would allow them to do things that weren't possible in Returns, such as have a dynamic 3D camera. It would also allow the Kong's detailed fur, which was in fact requested by Iwata. That said, there were just as many ideas that didn't make it into Tropical Freeze, with Tanabe saying he would have liked to experiment with the series' animal buddies. Another idea the team wanted to see was bringing back series composer David Wise. For Returns, Miyamoto didn't want the music to be changed, so the soundtrack was mainly comprised of remixes from the original country. Wise was contacted by Kelba for Returns score, but he was unavailable at the time, so the job was handed to Kenji Yamamoto. Shortly after Returns launch, Kelba privately met with Wise at the Game Developers Conference and asked if he'd be available for a future project with an old friend. Wise immediately agreed and got to work with Yamamoto on Tropical Free 
Breeze's score. For the Grassland Groove track, some of the vocals were supplied by Nintendo staff who were regulars in choirs. Yamamoto recruited them and had them sing the track's choir segments, with Wise saying it gave the song a unique charm. Wise has also said that the Seashore War track was originally made for the Savannah levels, and that it's his personal favorite track he's ever composed, though it's a track different from what's heard in the final game. To coincide with the UK release of Returns, the game was promoted with UK retailers Game and Game Station, where the first 20 customers could get a copy of the title in exchange for a bunch of bananas at select stores. This isn't the only bit of fun that was had with the game. Returns' Foggy Fumes level has several Nintendo Easter eggs. A silhouette of Crocomire's skull from Super Metroid can be seen in the background, and the character Mr. Game & Watch makes a cameo appearance later on. Early in the level is a silhouette of the 25 meter stage from the Donkey Kong arcade game. Similarly, Tropical Freeze has a reference to Donkey Kong 3 in the Fruity Factory level, featuring a replica of the game's first stage in the background. Stanley the Bugman's Bug Sprayer also appears in the foreground. The level Busted Bayou even features Samus's gunship ensnared in the trees. The secret level themes in both games also incorporate music from Donkey Kong Jr. Donkey Kong's idle animation of him playing a Nintendo handheld has been updated with each of Retro's games, starting with a DS Lite in Returns and upgrading to a 3DS XL in the Wii U version of Tropical Freeze. The Nintendo Switch port fittingly has him play the Switch in handheld mode. The animation may have been inspired by an event at the San Francisco Zoo, where a child dropped their DS in the gorilla pen and the gorillas started to play with the console. The event took place a few months before Return's launch and Retro Studios took note of the event on their site. The plot to Tropical Freeze is also similar to a German Donkey Kong comic called Banana Day 24, issued in a 19. Club Nintendo magazine. In it, DK, Diddy, Dixie, and Cranky have to save their home from being frozen over, though the similarities between the comic and game end there. Tropical Freeze on Switch interestingly makes a reference to obscure DK media, where Tox the Parrot will tell Funky Kong to give the Snowmads the old banana slammer, referencing Donkey Kong's catchphrase from the Donkey Kong Country animated series. Did you also know that the Nintendo DS has been to the top of Mount Everest? Or that illegal downloads for Pokemon Platinum almost matched the amount the game sold? For more facts, check out our video on the Nintendo DS. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell to get our latest videos. And if you want to see one of my videos, feel free to check out my list of the top 10 animated video games. You know, the kinds of games where you play them and you feel like you're playing a cartoon, that kind of stuff. Only thing I can promise is that it's not going to be a waste of your time. See yous! Thank you